I don't know about you guys, but the month of June has flown by and it keeps flying by. And it just doesn't seem like we ever have enough time to get everything done. But this little baby back here has saved us hours in the garden. Hey folks, welcome back to the Rock and Sea Homestead. My name is Lance. I want to welcome you to our channel. And if you don't know what this is, this is a automatic watering system and we set it up for our gardening, our garden. And it has been the best investment that we've ever made for our garden. It has saved us at least an hour a day, every day this month. And by the end of the summer, it's going to save us over hundreds of hours. So I ended up going with the Rainbird for several different reasons. I don't know if you guys ever go out to the store and you looked at Home Depot, Lowe's, those type of places that have irrigation system, watering systems that are automatic. And it is just overwhelming. All the different varieties, all the different types, what really works, what doesn't. And then you say, okay, this is the one I want. Then it's like, okay, how do I get it from the point of the water to the plants and what all do I need in between there? So I went and talked to some of my farmer friends that have huge acreages that they plant, that they plant and they grow and they sell. And they have a variety of different systems. And a couple of them said, hey, go to this place. They'll be able to help you out. So I went to that place. They weren't able to help me out, unfortunately, but they led me to a place that could. And they, this place called Doc Savage, they actually took me through from start to finish what I needed, what parts, and we just went down from where the where the watering system is back here and they just went through all the parts list of everything i need to be able to come in here and get it set up to grow all this stuff in our garden so let me kind of show you exactly how this is set up now i will say this i am not a plumber i'm not an electrician so some of this stuff was a little bit out of my comfort zone getting it set up it is a little it, when I was first getting into it, it seemed a little complex. Now that I've went through the whole process, not so daunting. So I think anybody can do it. Just a little bit of research. And once you kind of get in the flow, everything really goes together really, really well. Super simple system, actually. It's just knowing what components you have to put in what order is really what it comes down to. So from us, starting here from the water, we have it going into a filter. We, we do run off of well water, so sometimes there's a sediment that kind of gets brought up. So we have that. Then it goes to a backflow. That's that white pipe. So if for whatever reason something happens, it doesn't flush into our well water. And then from, the, from there, it comes over here to the valves. And I have this set up in a, in a four zone setup so I can water different things at different times or different amount of times for those. So this was not the first setup. You know, when you start putting these things together, again, again, I'm not a plumber, and I try to research this, try to find uh, ideas online how to do this efficiently and, and smoothly, and the first time it was not, I have to have to show you a picture of it if I can find it. It was not pretty, it was like a, a tree from hell almost from all these different pipes coming out and trying to lead to these different ones made it much simpler but the main water line comes in right here as you can see and it comes off and it splits off four different valves then I have one water line left to go on there and that's actually going to provide water to the watering station but during different times of the day these pipes will kick on these valves or solenoids, whatever they're called, will actually turn on and water will start flowing through it and it'll water a certain area of the garden. Now I can turn this on manually and, and I have water flowing through it now. Or I can just turn it off and whatever time it is, whenever that timer set, it will just pump, it'll just, there's a little float valve in here and it opens it up and it allows water to get to the garden. All right, so we have that, we have a water line running all through here underneath the ground. Since this is kind of a high traffic area, we thought we'd bury it. And we have it popping up right on the side of the bed here. 
and it's coming up and it's, you know, 90 degree bends, little connectors. And then we have it set up in a little square pattern in here. If you guys can see that or not. This bed's pretty full, so I'm gonna have to show another one. But we have all of these beds linked together. So this bed links with this bed. And you can kind of see the piping a little bit better there. And we kind of have it set up like in this little rectangle or kind of system. And once that water turns on, that main line has no, no drip associated to it. Once they get into the bed, it actually has like a drip line. And each drip line has an emitter every, I think it's like 12 inches or 17 inches or something like that. But it drops a gallon per hour. So it just drips out a gallon per hour. So we run this for 30 minutes and all of these things get watered and they seem to be doing great. I mean, look at that. What do you guys think? Looking pretty good. We have a very similar setup here with their other beds. We have three lines coming from our valves, and I actually have these buried since this is a main walkway. As you can see, they all come up right there. Two shoot off all the way down to those other beds. And how we have it set up is each one of these segments of beds here, this one and this one is zone two. This bed and this bed is zone three. And then this bed and this bed is zone four. So as you can see, I just ran the main pipes down one line of our raised garden beds. And then I just kind of teed off the connections and brought a line over to the next bed, brought it up, over and in. I mean, this will give you a good picture of what the lines look like. We've had to do some replanting in this bed. We grew some cucumbers or started some cucumbers and roly poly bugs just ate it like crazy. So we had to put down some diatomaceous earth and uh, we're replanting it today or tomorrow it's a little bit late, but that's okay. They'll survive. And uh, we're putting up the trellis thing. We'll show you, bring you guys along to set those things up and hopefully be really good. So we planted those cucumbers the same times we planted these. So we had some, or some butternut squash, acorn squash, and then these are cucumbers right over here. So hoping to have some great cucumbers coming up here in the near future. But guys, I cannot stress this enough that having this thing kick on, and right now I have it set on twice a day. It kicks on like at six o'clock in the morning, runs through the cycle, and then again at six o'clock at night, I have it run through the cycle. It saves us so much time and energy, especially here in the last month, we've been, uh, adding a few more things here on our homestead. We're, we're, we're milking goats now. So that takes me about an hour, hour and 15 minutes to milk, clean, you know, do all those things you gotta do with the milk to make sure it's sanitary and healthy. And it's just one of those things where it just takes a lot of time. So by the time I get done milking and finish with all that, it's about 8.15, 8.30 every night. So the last thing I wanna do is come out here and water. Now we do have to hand water a few things, just a few things in the garden. But it takes like five minutes compared to 
45 minutes to an hour. So if there is something I have to do in the garden, I can just come out here and handle the garden and not have to worry about watering. And time, I mean, I don't know about you, I never have enough time. If you have enough time, leave it in the comments. I'd like to know. i like to know your secret sauce because I don't got enough of it for sure. So a couple things to think about before you get a irrigation system. Number one, you know, how much are you going to irrigate? How much water flow do you have in your watering system? Are you on a well? Are you in city water? You know, how much of that's actually going to be able to get come through? Are you going to overwork your well? Those kind of things. We have a very good well. It, uh, you know, I don't know how much flow and all that stuff. I should have probably tested that, but I didn't. But it seems to be working out fine. Uh, like I said, it only waters different zones so it's only dropping it in that one zone for so many minutes another zone and it's not watering the entire garden all at once the system actually will not allow you to do that and it freaked me out at first because I thought I set it up wrong and it took me like a couple days to figure out oh this is just how it's made again it's made for an irrigation system like when you're watering your lawn so you know in most cases you don't want all your yard to come on all at once just because it would suck your water dry so this is a little bit smarter than what I would be, but again, it's working out great for us. We've learned to kind of work with it. And, uh, and again, you know, just watering certain parts of the garden. It takes about two hours for a full cycle to go through because we're watering about 30 minutes each or two of them are getting 30 minutes and we've kind of, these back two over here, zone three and four, these guys are getting a little bit less because we're noticing, and I'm not for sure if they're just because they're newer beds or it's, kind of how it's draining back here but there's a lot of water ponding on the ground back here so we're thinking these two beds in the back are brand new this year so they're not as compacted as the other two the other four we have so more water is dripping through and not absorbing out so we've actually cut down the watering amount per per time but again they're getting plenty of water and we're trying to get this dried out plus it doesn't get as much sun back over here as it does in the front part of our garden. So these are all things that we're kind of working out. But a couple other things that you need to think about when it comes to what to look at or what to think about when it comes to your, to your garden. So is it just your garden that you're worried about? Do you have any future plans to water different things? So I know for us, we want to have, you know, like a little, little bit of it, like an orchard, have some fruit trees, have some peach and, you know, whatever, pear and apple or whatever out here somewhere in our land back in here and you know as Mars and I get older I mean we're not old but as we get older we don't want to lug five gallon buckets of water out to these plants and and, and trees and, and water them so once we decide to do that we'll go out there run the lines and get it set up to where we can automatically water them this system will do that same thing if we plant blackberry bushes or a strawberry patch or any of those kind of things, we can run lines out to it and be able to irrigate it without us having to manually do it day in, day out. And as you guys know, it just takes time and energy. And sometimes we don't have enough energy and we definitely don't have enough time. So, but that's one thing to consider, you know, how, how, how much of a system do you need? This wasn't, this wasn't a cheap system. We saved up. We knew that we wanted a, a system in place to water automatically. We've been researching for the last year or so, and we finally pulled the trigger. We'd saved up enough money, and we got it, and we kind of future-proofed it a little bit. There's some more modules we could get to add on to it. There's some more features that we can go into in the near future that I'm looking forward to, but for now, it's working great. Uh, I did spend a little extra on the Wi-Fi uh, portion of it, just so, I mean, I could sit there and uh, I can sit there on my phone or on a tablet and be able to change the timing and I get notified every time a, a zone comes on, it comes off and it just, it just makes sure that I just know what's going on without having to come out here in the front, unlock the box, check it, do all those kind of things. Super simple, very easy to actually change all that stuff once you get into it and you kind of learn it. So now, like I said, it's not for everybody. I mean, you can get some that you can just plug into your faucet set a timer, turn on your faucet, and it may cost you, you know, 30, 40 bucks, plus whatever kind of tubing and that kind of stuff. The box and the wires and the tubing was the biggest cost, and then some of the connectors were, you know, 10, 20, 30 cents, depends on which one they were. 
But again, so far, we've loved it. We have one more bed to set up. So once we set that bed up, I'll actually bring you guys along to show you exactly how I'll hook all the piping up and show you exactly how to hook it into the system. And it's just gonna be the fourth bed onto that zone one uh, there on the herbs. We got the bed ready back here. I don't know if you guys can see that back there. We just have to find the time to get it over there, get it set. Marsh has a couple plants we need to put into it, so it's gonna happen this week. It's just finding the time to do that. But guys, hopefully uh, we showed you something that maybe you've been interested in. Again, it seems very overwhelming at first when you start looking at what kind of systems to get and what kind of system to buy. And, and then, then once you get it, how to get it set up and get it working correctly. Once you're in the mode and once you're in the flow of it, it's not that bad. It's just a little bit of work or a lot of work, depending on what it was. And, uh, and it's working good. And then, then it's just kind of tweaking it to what you need. So guys, thanks for coming back, watching our video all the way to the end. We really do appreciate that. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, there'll be a button down here. Click on that link, ring that bell so you get notified every time a video comes out. And from our homestead to yours, have a blessed day. Keep growing and we'll catch you on the next video. Bye.